Hello, hello. Welcome to the new recap, and we're totally on time, and nothing is out of the ordinary here. This is your host, Iron Master, with a special guest host, if he wants to introduce himself. Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Volpus and Colta. Um, you might not have heard from me. I, I am a sports reporter also. I cover 10C, so I know that uh, everyone in that division is a little bit more familiar with me, but um, I'm really happy Iron Master has me on for the program today. Yep. Also, you do some streaming, right? I do, yeah. I try to. Um, just uh, randomly. I'm not like that invested in it, but I'll try to stream some games, especially if uh, I see within the Discord that someone is really wanting to watch a certain game within their division. Um, I try to I try to get on there. I've done some lazy streams um, while I'm at work. Uh, I've streamed a few 10C games as well. That, that, that seems to do all right. So I, I try when I can to try to help out. Yeah. So make sure to keep an eye out for them. You do have a knack for looking at the play and casting it. Very interesting while you do it. But let's move on and look at the 10D schedule of our week four. So starting from the top, we got Plagueum with a three run over the Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs. So that's pretty much just rats getting around lizards. They have no tackle. Nothing's going right. They're hitting the line rats, but nothing else. The next, we got a uh, first foreskin lions. Chip lead is the high elves in here. Yep. And then we got the boss hog outlaws, which is you. And you got a draw there. Yep. I'm guessing that was just punching elves and yeah, elves elving. Well, um, it was interesting. We um, the, It started off with uh, the high elves that got the ball. I was able to turn them over and score on their drive. Um, however, he outbashed me. So I was down players going into the second half. Um, I was also down to TV quite a bit. At the end, I tried to just go for a quick score. Came down to the point where um, I was a lightning bolt and a, a 2D block push away from scoring. Uh, failed the lightning bolt. Uh, wasn't able to get the push, and uh, he turned me over and scored it real quick. So, ended up being a 1-1 draw. Yeah. So, good SPP both ways, though. With a touchdown, some Kaz, some fun stuff happening. Yeah, that sounds about right. You give the ball up for a second, the Elves already got in your, uh, yeah. your end zone. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was, I was a bit frustrated with it, but um, considering that uh, RK Blaze, the coach, has a really good record so far in the division, I can't be too upset. Yeah. Anyway, moving on, we got the Cupcake Crushers, which is the Shiner Shooting Stars. And I'm pretty sure this is why my uh, normal host left. He was just, he was flattened as Halflings, and it flattened his spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Halfling off. And, so uh, three one, oh. Yeah, one Halfling came out uh, much stronger than the other one. Yeah, it was just number of blocks given up for his double. And I'm pretty sure that just means lots and lots of pain really, really early. So, but really why he was out was because uh, he just got busy, and I think his setup broke for a bit. I don't remember what broke about it, but someone was wrong. Anyway, we got the Adventuring Elites, or sorry, I'm skipping already. Torf 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 versus the Mordheim Cryptors, with the 1-1 there. Equal armor breaks, equal everything. And that pretty much just, I would guess, everyone did their thing. Hit stuff, score, hit stuff, score. Yeah, that's about as uh, typical 1-1 one, one draws you can find. Now, for that being super typical, we're about to hit, like, abnormal stuff right here with the Adventuring Elites tying One Punch Ogre. Which, <laughs> the reason this isn't normal is because, you know, yeah, Undead are probably one of the best teams early on. And the Ogres are just supposed to be horrible forever. But coming out with a 2-2 tie here is pretty uh, interesting. It is. If you would have told me before the match that uh, Undead would have scored two two points, then um, I would say, okay, yeah, uh, Ogres got crushed. Um, if you would have told me before the match that uh, the Ogres scored two two points, I would have been like, wow, the Undead lost that match. But uh, somehow four scores total. We definitely would not have expected that. If I remember correctly, the literal first part about this was Blitz, put a Nobbler right under the ball, and cage it. Oh, glorious. So I think that's how it worked out. And um, Gypsy Prince, I believe, is the coach of the Ogre team, right? And he, he streams a lot of his yep. matches. Yep, he streams it, and he also does the uh, Rebel newspaper. Oh, that's right. That's awesome. So be sure to check that out. His stream's always fun. Somehow he doesn't get salty over uh, Ogres. <laughs> I definitely would. Ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, go check him out, too. So next up, we got the Green Skin Gut Splitters versus Crypt Lords 2 Blue Galoo. And 
really, it's kind of backwards. You see three armor breaks for the uh, orcs, while you got tons for the necro. So it's just really a case of, I guess, AV8s, the new AV9. I think there's probably a lot of fouling in, in this match, if I were to guess. Um because uh, the uh, the orcs actually outblocked the necros, but they were able to achieve more armor breaks. So, um, yeah. yeah, that would make sense. Walking away with only an MVP on the orc side, though, is just a bummer. So, bit basic, and we'll move on from there. So we got abysmal cusps versus Hogwarts with a one score game to Hogwarts the necro. Which makes sense, you know. Nurgle aren't typically that great early on. Yeah, it's so tough to be able to, to generate um, effective offensive drives with a really early Nurgle team that doesn't quite have the kill skills. Um, they're, they're slow, um, and they're kind of get locked down really easily. So, Yeah. And uh, there's level up on the werewolf. Might not want to click him, because he's already past that point. So, he's uh, doing pretty good. That was a good level there. And it's, the Beast of Nurgle just getting closer. Yeah, I see that Werewolf's already 2.0. I wonder if uh, the first version R.I.P. Yeah. Or maybe he bought one and then maybe the other one 2.0. Uh, I don't yeah, know. So I have to check it out. But uh, even though Abysmal Cusp threw tons and tons of blocks, almost, you know, 50, they, they didn't get much damage, which I think was probably one of the limiting factors here. Anyway. Let's move on to week five, in which we see Plagueum. After having an impressive three-score game, they just do it again. But this time it's at 3-2. Yeah, they, they can score. They can score fast. Um, dead, Lino MVP is unfortunate. Yeah. Honestly, if you're rats, you're generally getting enough SVP anyway. It's more the money you worry about, in my experience, where it's like, I need line rats pronto. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. But almost 60 blocks for the Necro, and they just, they were really doing their darndest to try to win it. And Plagueum just basically getting a blitz a turn, plus a few line blocks, some passing going on, and some scoring. Man, all it takes is two or three gutter runners, and that can uh, win you a match all by itself. Yep. They're disgusting like that. All right, good job for Plagueum. And then, you know what was crazy? Was Ogre's tying against uh, Undead. But now we see them winning against some Necro. <laughs> winning strong. 2-0. Yeah. Against against a good coach. Um, I, I forget his name. Uh, Panzasaurus, I believe. Anyways, um, he uh, he's a really good coach. I tied him. So seeing the Ogres come out with a 2-0 victory, I was thoroughly surprised. Yep. And it really wasn't even due to too much attrition. There was like a couple KOs and injury... Actually, I think he did trip up a little more and got one more KO, so or two more KOs. So that could have been the deciding factor of early removals, but tied blocks and just the Ogres seemed to just have their number. Yeah, and it seemed like the Ogres actually kept up somewhat with the uh, the removals, um, which means uh, the Noblars were probably staying on the field more so than um, either from lucky armor rolls, injury rolls, couldn't get the pals on them. Um, a uh, bit, bit surprising that when you see uh, the, the Ogres are able to hang in there removal-wise. Plus, there was an expulsion I just saw for Hogwarts, so their bench was just was not there. Yeah. Anyway, moving on, after seeing that, we got Bismal Cusp versus the Mordheim Crypt Horrors with a 3-0. Yeah, I yeah, mentioned I just... it the, for the, with the previous week. It's uh, it's tough for Nurgle to uh, generate drives, so um, you shouldn't be too discouraged. I know uh, it's when you kind of uh, get beat up a little bit like this, you can be discouraged pretty easily with Blood Bowl, but uh, Nurgle's always there for the long haul. Yeah, I just find it crazy. He's throwing almost 60 blocks. He gets two injuries, thankfully, this game, but like 31 blocks the other way, three KOs, three injuries, probably some fouling included, but it's just a bit crazy. He actually had some really good block dice too. Um, Forty-eight pals versus thirty-six skulls. Um, he had some good block dice. Just, just uh, yeah, I guess uh, just couldn't break the armor as much as he wanted. Yeah, it's just, oops. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. 
Anyway, where are we in the week now? I think we're on to Green Skin Gutbusters versus Shiner Shooting Stars, where we have a tie. Um, you would really think that the orcs would have a little bit more of an advantage, but I'm guessing Deep Root was in this one. And with three trees, flings are just hard to deal with in general. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's not like the flings are that much slower than the orcs. So as long as the orcs could use like a speed advantage to kind of get around, um, if the trees were able to tie down some black orcs uh, or some blitzers, then they could halflings could really make the, the orcs live hell in this match. Yep. And we do see a thrower MVP. He does get block. So, you know, he's taking that a guy and saying, you know what? It's okay. He'll be my carrier. <laughs> I, I don't generally play with the uh, thrower because I'm like, movement six is so great. And then if you roll plus movement, that's even better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. So, shiners just doing their shiner stuff, not having a good season since they left their rats. Let's move on. And now we see you, after having the Adventuring Elites tie some ogres, you get a nice 3-1 win against them. How'd that happen? Yeah, it worked out. I was able to form a pretty decent offensive drive. Um, uh, I was able to score, I think, around turn 8. Um, got a, I think I, I surfed a few players and was able to get some numbers advantage for the drive. Uh, second half, it started off with uh, me receiving a blitz. Um, and I was able to kind of just throw my uh, bulls into their other half, put a lot of pressure on their ball carrier. And I think it was a deep kick, and he failed a 1-9 and pickup that allowed me to send one bull to push his ghoul off and another bull to do a, a quick recovery and score. He, uh, he then was able to, um, was able to in return, uh, generate another, like, two or three turn score. And then uh, I was able to kind of do the same at the end. So second half, a lot of scoring. Um, but yeah, f fortunate with the blitz, I was able to take advantage of it. Yeah, that just sounds like you had his number, and I can see through the statistics that you got lots of removables too. It, towards the end, it started to snowball. Um, once, um, yeah, the uh, a, a lot of zombies were uh, getting punched in the face after after you get one or two down. Then um, uh, it's uh, you build that that dwarf wall, and it's uh, it's kind of easy, kind of just push people around. Fair enough. And then let's move on. After your nice, impressive win, we see some other dwarfs not having a great enough time to face off some dinosaurs. And a 2 1 win for the Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs. So, you know, normally I think this would be a dwarf win, you know, just looking at it, because you got tackle for skinks, and then you got a lot of block already. It's hard to get a removal against you. Yeah, I, w I would say one of the. Um kind of the the one real counter to chores is uh strength and obviously lizards with so many strength four around um he could have mm -hmm. tied down some blockers pretty easily with some source and um you really got to depend on your your bulls here to to do work and if they don't have the skills to knock over the skinks then it's uh you can have a bad time i, I i'm not that i'm not that surprised that uh, the lizards came out lizards came out on top on this one mm -hmm. it's fair enough and Decent amount of SPP spread around here, but nothing to write home about. Got a level, and sure hands hop got one. Oh, nice. I need one of one of those myself. Yep. And then last one for, for week five is the Cupcake Crushers versus the first in Forsaken Lions. That's and like we have a, an admin ooh, in here, actually. Yeah, that looks like an admin win. So a bit lame, but you know what? It happens. Yeah, real life comes up sometimes let's move up to the most recent weeks where we got plagum getting another win against more halflings and we can see that an av6 lineman with leader has gotten an mvp because he's awesome <laughs> but lots of deaths both ways so yeah, make no mistake uh, there was a fight and it's two arm breaks to two deaths too so <laughs> the uh I'm just deep, saying deeper strong brands getting the mvp for uh the Shiner shooting stars is unfortunate, but man, they, they threw so many blocks this game. Um, it's, uh, it looks like the rats hadn't wanted to do nothing about punching the trees or the halflings. Yeah, it's, that is literally less than one blitz per turn right here. And Deep Root Strong Brand's got nine SVP. <laughs> well, he deserved the MVP after just yeah, creaming so. some guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, at least you really don't care about SPP on halflings. It's like my trees can get it. Maybe yeah. a cool halfling. That's true. But That's I don't true. need more. Yep. But that was a costly victory for Plagum. Who are probably getting close to being in the lead, if not first. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a we'll take a look yeah, at the we'll leaderboard take... later. But they, they score a lot. Yeah. Anyway, we got the Boss Hog Outlaws, which is you taking a 2-0 against the Mordheim Cryptors. And already having a block Bray Tackle Centaur is pretty good this early on. It really is, yeah. Um but definitely been focusing on having them as my ball carriers. Um, it was a pretty similar story from the the previous week where I was able to put together a pretty good offensive drive. Um, he actually had um, a one die on the ball with his wrestle ghoul um, and got a push push, which I was a little bit fortunate with. Um, I scored on turn seven, I believe, so he forced a little bit of an early early score. Um, he uh, he wasn't able to counter, and then once again start off the second half, I got a blitz. And uh, he actually failed two one and nine pickups this time, so it was uh, man. Yeah, once again, I was able to take take advantage of the blitz. So definitely been fortunate up to this far. Um, I'd say uh, the, the last two weeks uh, probably aren't a direct representation of whether my team or skill uh, over the other coaches. So, but I have been able to take advantage of those blitzes, which is I guess what you have to do. Yep. I'm just going to say, can I get those, uh, yeah. those you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Anyway, we were at you, and now we're on to the Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs tying some ogres. Like, these ogres have been on a streak right they, now. They have been whipping people the last three weeks, which is uh, awesome. And I, I saw part of this one, actually, and in the first half, the lizards were dominating their offensive drive. Um, they uh, it got to the point where they they handed off to Asaurus to um, to to try to uh, get some SVP on Asaurus, and then this one nobbler I don't know if he was thrown but he might have been kind of pretty close at the half I think he was able to uh, lock onto or like base uh, the Saurus on turn eight I believe and so or it was turn seven and then when the the Saurus on turn eight uh, got a three die block and uh, they got. Uh, it was all pushes on the first one, and then he re-rolled it, and it was uh, Skull, both down, both down. And the Noblar was able to stop the offensive score just by like, facing <laughs> the swords. You know, that's 20k well spent, I say. <laughs> it was insane. I, I didn't see the second half, unfortunately, but I did see that portion where if uh, I was a Lizard's coach, I might have, I don't know, I might have thrown my computer. It's where you just, you sit... You go back and lay back in your seat. You're like, did that just happen? <laughs> you're like, I hate this game. Why am I playing this game right now? <laughs> I literally just got the Saurus handoff to go score on him. And then, like, I screwed myself <laughs> over because I have a Saurus holding the ball now. <laughs> it was rough, man. It was rough. But, you know, you got to give it to Ogres. They at least have something to use. He's a good coach. He's a game. good coach. And um, I think he has a strength four Ogre running around also right now because he is not able yep. to replace it. So Yeah, he's uh, straight four, break tackle guard. And he's like, it's my most developed Ogre, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's uh, yeah, Jeff Prince is, is a really good coach. So uh, I guess I'm not that surprised that he's able to uh, uh, put some beat down on some teams. And then just one last thing to note was three injuries versus three injuries. So that's probably what was helping out Jimsy Prince at the end there. Just, you can lose Noblars all day. He can't lose Soros all day. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no doubt. So, moving on. We got the first in Forsaken Lions versus the Crypt Lords 2 Boogaloo, where the Crypt Lords take a W here. And this was actually uh, RK Blaze's first loss of the season. So, um... yeah. Which is, you know. Quite it's, surprising, you know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect Hyles to have them in success early, but uh, he's played them really well. They're, they're they they have developed amazingly um, through the first half of the season. Um, so it's not your typical first six games high elf team, but um, yeah, looks like uh, looks like it was a really good win for the Necro team. Yeah, and one of the things that spells the uh, story out is ten removals. Ooh, just that is no elves left. Wow. Lots and lots of hits. And there was apparently 11th that was probably a trip. Mm -hmm. So those elves just could not stay on the pitch for any of those hits. Look at that SPP racked up by the Necro team also. Just that was their week to play. Whew. After awesome. having some rough times, 
just blasting through some elves. Yeah, that's an awesome game for him. Yep. Yeah. And then we just got 2-1. Nothing too special there, but still a win. And then we got Cupcake Crushers versus Hogwarts. The other Necro team, who I guess just couldn't get the Cupcake Crushers down. Because it's similar breaks, and when it's similar breaks, you're probably getting hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, we do see five injuries. And let's check out those regen rolls real quick. So only two regen rolls, so... That must have been ghouls were getting hit, doesn't it? Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so I think it was actually just two injuries inflicted, actually. So the, the Necro team inflicted five injuries on the, the Halflings. Oh, you're so, right. I'm just being silly. No, you're fine. But uh, it's still, it's... Um, yeah. When when you're facing Halflings with their AV... Was it AV6? Six. Six. Yeah, and yeah. Stunty. You would expect to, even with them out blocking you, you would expect to at least compete in the removal game. Um, when, um, so, yeah, so I, I guess I'm not that surprised to see the, the, the five injuries, but the, looking at all the dice rolls and the stats, I would expect a, a Necro win here. So I'm curious about maybe if there was a toss involved or some halfling shenanigans that, uh, that was able to pull out the draw. Yeah. It's also just if you had deep root. Like I said, you just, you wall them off. <laughs> like, you're going to make a screen of trees. What are you going to do? Yeah. Not a damn or thing. you're just basing half their useful players, and they either have to throw a block and add more players to it, or try dodging away with every player already there. <laughs> yeah. There's just no good option. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to our last one for this week, is Chorf 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 versus Abysmal Cusp, in which Nurgle pull out a win here they did we saw the prior weeks that they were they were having a bit of a, a struggle um generating some offense but uh looks like they were able to kind of clamp down on defense and they they got a score which is awesome to see which is yep. which is um a good bounce back victory for them yeah also just 11 breaks like we were seeing four and like five now we're seeing 11 even though it wasn't all ko's and injuries it was still just Having all those stuns really do help yeah, in the match. Yeah, maybe that's what allowed him to um, actually generate some offense. A uh, quick look at uh, the Chorf 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 uh, uh, dice. So it looked like um, the fireball knocked down four Chorfs. It was, uh, he, he failed to resist all four rolls. So <laughs> it looked like there might have been a pretty lucky fire, fireball in there, right? I, I think I'm reading that right, correct? I think that's right, yeah. Because uh, you roll to see if you resisted the fireball or not. So it looks like you failed all four. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I just fireball, just nuked him. Yeah, stunned. Sounds fireball. about right. Um, got, got enough uh, players on the ground to be able to move the ball or, or stop the score as well. So that's... Uh, uh, once again, yep. if, 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 you, you don't have to feel bad if you get good dice, right, in this game. Like, it's... You can feel bad if you get bad dice, but you don't have to feel bad if you get good dice. So if you take advantage of it, then you know it's going to come back on you. You're going to have another game where you have bad dice. So once you get the good dice, just gracefully accept it and be like, yeah, I'll take this win. Not saying that's exactly what's the story here, but in any case, just generally speaking. It's also just like, you got to remember the wins you got. Yeah. Don't remember all the bad stuff. Yeah. Anyway, Venturing Elites versus Green Skin Gut Splitters. We're not even going to talk about that one because I don't know if it's getting played or not. Right. I hope it gets played tonight before the rollover. That'd be nice. Yeah. But let's look at the leaderboard real quick and we'll go back to the current week and uh, show off everything that's going to be done. Anyway, seeing at first is Plagueum. Not too surprising. I think we we're all expecting this after seeing him get so many touchdowns and wins right in that streak there. But they're not too far ahead from RK Blaze with the first and Forsaken Lions coming up two points behind them with a 4 1 1. And then you're up there with a 3 3 0. Doing good. You just got to stop drawing, man. <laughs> it was uh, kind of some of those early matches. Um, yeah, drew. Uh, I, I, with, well, I drew with RK Blazes in second place. I drew with um, the Orcs as my first match. Just kind of had a hard time scoring on them. Um, drew against. Mm -hmm. uh, Pontosaurus. I'm not sure if I'm saying his coach name right as well. So 
uh, yeah, I mean, Turfs aren't the greatest early on, so I can't be too upset with the draw, but I, I'm, I am shooting for the playoff spot. I, I do want to... Um, I would like to consider myself as someone who can compete for it. So, um, so yeah, yeah the, the draw the draws hurt a bit early, but long season. Yeah, you're certainly in there still with 12 points still. While top is, geez, I can't even do math now. I think <laughs> top is 14. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so you're really not that far behind. No, no, at all. And I, I actually, um, I still have to play him too at some point too, which is nice. I, I think it might be the last week of the season, but uh, ooh, yeah, it could be good. And then, look it up. Crip Lords 2 Boogaloo, after taking a couple losses in these recent weeks, still pulling up a really good record here. Yeah, the four wins is Which nice. Is. And I will say, I'm probably more scared of facing this team than anyone else uh, within the division. Um, I mm-hmm. think uh, he's a really good coach. I think he's better than what the record says. And uh, obviously, those wolves can cause some damage. Yeah. Better than what his record says is saying a lot because 402 is still yeah, pretty good. Agreed. Yeah, I think he's one of the better coaches from what I've seen within the division. I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he's the one that gets a playoff spot at the end of the year. Okay. Let's look down and we'll see the Mordheim Cryptors with Dr. Spagooters. Best coach name ever. <laughs> Best coach name ever. <laughs> but he's coming in with a 2 3 1. This is where we're starting to get to being average here with Ponosaurus literally just right behind with the same record with his Hogwarts and Necro. Yep. Yeah, I think... Um, it was Mulcusp with it, it, Sir Kodiak just playing 2-2-2. Two, two, two. I, I think those uh, those three coaches, that uh, they're, they're still competing for the playoff spot, uh, but they yeah, I think they uh, are a little bit more pressured to uh, make a run here uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah. One of the things that you see a lot with these uh, fresher divisions is someone usually runs away with it, and it's really hard to catch up with that one guy because yep. he's not taking losses. Yep. But... We'll see that this is where you can see that even if you're like getting a lot of ties, it really doesn't help if you're not getting the wins here. So the Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs, they have a really good even record. But if they had been like probably risking it more for wins and stuff, they would have been, you know, up there in the brackets. Even if you get one extra loss, you go higher just having more wins. Right. Yep. And he could be playing really well. Um I haven't watched any of his games. Like I said, I watched just a very tiny portion of his Ogre match, and some unfortunate events happened there. But he could be playing really well, and just uh, unfortunately kind of uh, in the middle of the pack there. Yeah. And King of Cosmos right under with the 1-3-1. Kind of just having problems with Undead in general, I feel. And then One Punch Ogre, Gypsy Prince, my clan leader, going 1-2-3. Get three. Pretty good with Ogres. Pretty good. Pretty damn good. Especially the last three weeks we've seen. Yeah. So that last three weeks were literally everything that went right. So I'm getting ready to uh, see everything that goes wrong for the next three weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cupcake Crushers with Dra- Grey Dragoon. 1-1-4. One, one, Same with the Shiner Shooting Stars. And just seems like the Halflings are not getting what they needed. As yeah, their team selves. yeah, you know, um, looking at the Cupcake Crushers, um, if you were to, like take a look at a lot of their matches, they they play a lot of people really mm-hmm. tough. Um, they, uh, I think once again, I think this they're better than what their record says at the moment, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if they got a couple more wins, um, even against me in the next couple weeks. Yep. One thing I haven't seen a lot is just Chores getting beat by halflings. And it's just so weird to watch. I'm a, I'm a little scared about it. I uh, I was fortunate enough to beat uh, Nosedive and his uh, Shiner Shooting Stars, but um, yeah, the last last couple weeks I've seen just some <laughs> some Torf teams get demolished by Halflings. So uh, I'm a, I'm a little intimidated going into our match with the uh, Grey uh, Grin. Mm-hmm. And then last two with Greenskin Gut Splitters. Taking three draws and a tie, or sorry, and uh, two losses. One still to go with King Cosmos. And then we got Chorf, Chorf, Chorf in the back with Wait, Hold My Beer with two draws, four losses. So they're playing for the development season, just trying to get back in shape. So let's look at the teams, and then we'll go to the schedule one last time to make some picks. So since you're here, I vote that we we're going to just take a look at your team real quick. Sure, yeah. And talk about it and how it doesn't have a, a motto. <laughs> Man, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm sure I could choose some uh, Houston rap lyric, which is uh, my team theme um, that, that I can place mm-hmm. within there. <laughs> anyway. I think you've also been ragging on me on the uh, um, the human cheerleaders, also. 
Oh yeah, why do you still have them, man? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't think about it. <laughs> you, you guys switch it over just right now. Make me feel better. All right. What do you <laughs> want? Orc, dwarf, orc, orc, orc forever. Okay. Yeah. To take dwarf. I'm gonna be a sad guy. <laughs> I don't even know if I've seen the dwarf cheerleaders. Maybe hardly anyone has them. Yeah, they use barrels and stuff, and uh, not the fun ones to look at. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see in your team, you uh, value break tackle more than block on your bulls. Any I do. Reason for that? Um, you know, I I thought I was going to be alone in here, but when I've when I've checked out other developed dwarf teams, um, a lot of people go block first. Now, I would have taken dodge if I would have gotten a double, um, but mm -hmm. I. I'm okay with not having block on a player. I mean, I say that as I have six blockers, uh, dwarf, or dwarf mm -hmm. blockers, but um, even with my other teams, um, um, obviously you have that one in nine risk of uh, failing the block, but uh, I value the mobility of the bulls, uh, especially on our dwarf team. Uh, they're really slow, um, and uh, really for like the hobgoblins, I'm just using them to like provide assists at this point. I don't have a bench, so I'm not going to be fouling with them. Um, and mm -hmm. they, uh, so I've, I've been trying to protect them and not really expose them. And that kind of leaves me with a pretty kind of potentially bogged down team. That's tough. And the, the break tackle all of a sudden makes the bulls a lot more mobile. I didn't want to get someone just base one of my bulls. And all of a sudden I'm using these hobgoblins to putting them in, in riskier positions to, to try to make plays. And I, I mean, I will say that the break tackle has been able to uh, help me win games because uh, I was able to capitalize on two blitzes by sending my bulls down into the backfield. And um, and within that, I was able to complete some two-plus dodges to get them in favorable positions. So um, And also, I was using them as ball carriers. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do value break tackle more than block, and uh, I guess I'm a little bit surprised that more coaches don't. That was a good way to put it. And I guess... One of the other things is just like, um, you you get a zombie on you. You have to deal with the zombie if you only have block. Well, like this, you just get to run away from it. Yeah, exactly. Which does make some more sense there. And then we got some really good dwarf level ups here. You got a plus strength, and then some mighty blow and some guard. Usually, I've heard you just want your doubles like right after a mighty blow guy, and you just hope for the best on that. Right. You know, um, taking guard first is a bit. It's good for winning games, but if he rolls a double next and I have guard claw, that's kind of not good. That's not a good combo. Um, obviously, you'll take it, but I mm. and I don't know. It's um, turf blockers. Uh, you know, there, there's not a lot of creativity when it comes to choosing their level ups, but I do think in the order in which you choose your level ups um, is. I, th I find that part interesting in developing them because you really are just mm -hmm. kind of hoping for that double. For like the bull centaurs, I'm really hoping for a double as well. Um, and I, I, I actually, with the strength four uh, level up I got, I took the strength four and I felt bad for it a little bit immediately after. I was like, should I have taken claw? Like, does that even make sense? If I'm going to have a bunch of guard on this team, does it even make sense to really take the strength four in that situation? But I talked to a few people and they're like, yeah, idiot, take the strength four. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think it's interesting. If you know, it, I I won't be able to compete at high TV if I can't get claw, and I'm wanting to get two or three claw pieces. If you look at Bleeding Hippie's team, who won it the season before, he has four claw. He has four killers that is able to just do so much damage. Mm -hmm. And if I can't get that, then this team isn't going to be going very far. So I'm a little bit reliant upon my level ups, which makes you think. You know, do you? Do you recycle dwarf blockers if you can? Maybe one or one. Um, you kind of keep on trying to hoping for a claw if you don't get that. There, the chances are that I, I get claw on at least a few of them at some point if I keep leveling them up. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, what if I don't, right? So um, I uh, I want to be able to kind of keep this team for the long haul. So, I, yeah, it's uh, it's it's boring with the the dwarf teams can be kind of boring with their development compared to other teams like Norse where you have so much creativity that you could be with but um mm. I think there is still some tough decisions to be made. Yeah. One thing I was going to point out is like a lot of dwarfs they like just taking a lot of mighty blow spam just to have that option open for when the double comes. Exactly. And yeah. your team's really early so it's definitely not running into the problem of should I recycle this guy until probably about right, right. their fourth level up overall where yeah, you're like, agreed. okay, you're really good still, but I mean, 
you could be better. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And that's when you finally make the switch. I feel. Yeah. Definitely and then you also got to remember, you need some dirty players, man. <laughs> Agreed. I uh, I want to bench first. Um, I mm-hmm. I don't. I could buy a hobgoblin right now, but I like to have cash in the reserves in case I lose a bull um, or a blocker during the next match. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably go play one more match and then I'll grab. Um, a bench, and then my next Hobgoblin level up after a bench will be Dirty Player. Yeah. And then you know the trick for Dirty Player and benches, right? Uh, what's that? It's usually every bench you have, you have a Dirty Player for it. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I like that, yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't heard then, that, uh, but the, the, I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's generally one of the rules, so you can just foul and not feel bad. Yeah. But I would pick up the extra Hobgoblin now. And I know you like cash on hand, but 40k, you still need like a three, and then you get a chorf blocker. Bull, you're not going to be having fun with if that gets gone. But I mean, the reason I would pick it up now is so the attrition doesn't hurt you later on in the match. Because like you go down one player, and it's like, oh yeah, that's not too bad. But once you go down two or three, you could have mitigated one and felt a little bit better about the situation. And then you're giving up more hits on more valuable stuff. Yeah, it's how we got one dies. Who cares, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. I'm facing halflings next, uh, great, a greater dance, which could either mean um, everyone dies or no one dies. So, um, I don't know. It's uh, I think I'm gonna hold off uh, with just the, the 11 man team for now because I think I can win with an 11 man team. He also has yeah. uh, 11 halflings. I guess that makes sense too because it's halflings and they're gonna yeah. do stuff. I'm just hoping that I uh, don't lose a, a blocker or a bull. <laughs> If Fair anyone enough. can, t- if anyone can take a, a true punch, it's uh, it's either a long beard or a dwarf blocker, right? Yeah. Now you want to make a pick for me on who we want to visit next? Yeah, sure. Let's let's check out. Um. Let's check out RK Blaze in the first and Forsaken lines. I was kind of talking a little bit about their uh, really good early development. I think um, we saw them before in my other ones. Oh, so. did you? Okay, so yeah. let's um, let's roll with. We can go with. Uh, the, have you seen a Koran Skaven team, the division leader? Don't think so. Let's go check them out then. Yeah, plug them. I'm betting they're going to be way more disgusting since last time. Oh, I don't know. They look like they might have taken quite a bit of attrition here in the last few matches. Mm-hmm. Got some AV six. <laughs> a lot of it. Agility five blood. I mean, AV6. agility five blood is pretty good. Yeah, and hundred K is still in the bank, so we're probably going to be seeing a uh, gutter runner replaced. And then he's going to be pretty diminished for the next match, but he has a leader, so he's rocking four re rolls right now, and a kick player. Is that a niggle or an MNG? That's an MNG. And really, it just looks like rats are doing rat stuff. He got a claw vermin. Which feels really bad right now. Yep, yep. But you, you have to take it, unfortunately, once, yep. uh, once you're giving it to you. So I think one of the issues here is just it's been going to the gutter runners, and I think probably one that's leveled up died too. And it's only gone to the gutter runners, and that's been his whole play. Um, I think it probably needs more uh, development on the storm vermin. Because yeah, if you lose on the attrition front too much, you're going to be giving up too many hits, and you're going to not have a bench. Yeah, this has been interesting. I wouldn't have guessed a four wins, two draws division leader to have. Um, I know he's missing his his top uh, TV player, but only nine seventy TV. Um, one, two, mm-hmm. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he has eleven players with two MNGs. He's gonna have two loners next match. Um, but unless he buys a uh, another gutter, which he, he definitely might. Yeah. But I think um, he'll buy the gutter. It's interesting. You would you wouldn't think that this was uh, the actual. I guess I'm a bit surprised. I, I haven't taken a look at his team. I, I would have ever expected a, a bit more development. But um, yeah, maybe he's taken some gutter runner deaths, or maybe some linos might have been taken. Some. Oh, he did have a lino that had an MVP death, right? So yeah, that's that that definitely attributes to it as well. Yeah, I'm still just having a weird time dealing with the leader on the AV6 guy. <laughs> it seems like it's just. It's a bit backwards. Yeah. I guess you're going to be protecting him regardless, but I mean, AV6 just means that you can pop your reroll off early. But I guess that that's a very aggressive reroll there, too, since he's not even banking on it. Yeah, that's interesting. Just... I uh, I think I personally would fire that player, but uh, it's a, it's an interesting tactic. He might be he might play really aggressively. Mm-hmm. I will say that he uh, a lot. He's probably going to be getting some wizards, right? So mm-hmm. I mean, 
just uh, a regular non-leveled up gutter runner can uh, can win if you have a, a good enough wizard go off. Plus, just with being this cheap right now, he can buy a cool star. Like maybe he gets Glart, maybe some hack flim action. Yeah. Uh, just wizard, like you said. But I definitely like seeing stars over wizards all the time too. It's pretty good on Skaven. Like they got everything. They got cheap players. They got great inducements. They got amazing sheet players. Skaven in Pretty general just has everything you need to win. Um, it's just in a eternal league, it's difficult to keep them healthy throughout. Mm -hmm. But um, if you if the stars align and you have a killer and you have you have a potential uh, natural one turner, you could have some really really good gutter runners who can take advantage of blitzes or wizards. Um, then you have a team. You could have a bench with a dirty player. Like you can take advantage of anything that is kind of um, I don't know if I would say overpowered, but stuff that obviously leans more towards winning a match than not winning a match. The the Skaven have that. Yeah, it's pretty much just the only downside is you break easy. Yep. And that's hardly any downside when there's a lot of teams that have that issue. Yep. So. I'm ready to look at the schedule again, and we'll look at the current week. Sure. Or I guess not current week, but next week coming up, which we got Plagum versus Hogwarts. I'm thinking that Plagum's just going to keep going on, and with Hogwarts being at some TV, I'm guessing there's going to be inducements. Yeah, he's at 12:10, so maybe about a bribe range, or maybe even the wizard. Yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, we'll see. He's got he a tackle, so he's prepared for the match. Yep. But I think Plagum are still going to just at least scrape a draw of this, mostly because they've been leading already. They have really good inducement choices right now. And I'm going to be waiting to see what happens there. How about you? Uh, I think we'll go with the Hogwarts here. Um, I think they've had a bit of a tough going in the last couple weeks, but um, like I said, they have the tackle. And uh, I think Plagum's lack of bench is. Uh, might actually come back to hurt him, uh, not having the, the Agility 5 Gutter Runner. If he doesn't buy a Gutter Runner and he rolls with just two, um, then he might not be able to pull off um, as aggressive as Texas that I think he pulls, considering how many times he scores in a match. So um, we'll see. I think it's. Um, I think I'm going to go with the, the upset here. I like it. Anyway, Kit, Crip Lords 2, Boogaloo versus the Abysmal Cusp. And these are. Pretty much middle tier teams. Uh, Crip Lords 2 actually are a bit higher than I was giving them credit for again. So, got some Necro versus Nurgle. But I want to say Nurgle. I just feel like Abysmal Cusp are on the cusp of beating up some Necro here. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm i going to go with Crip Lords too. Look at the look image. I think he's uh, one of the best coaches in the division. Um, the Nurgle team has had a tough time scoring. Uh, in the past few weeks, they did get uh, a win, uh, but I think they've only scored maybe one point last three matches. Uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna give yeah. this one to the Necro. I, I just got a feeling Nurgle are gonna make that upset happen. Hey man, I, I'd, be, got... I'd be really happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we got One Punch Ogre, the best uh, ogre coach ever in this division, and uh, the Greenskin got Slitters, and I don't know who I want to call in this. It's going to be a fun match, though. That's what you can guarantee with Ogres. But I think I'll go with the Ogres still. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be going like with the, the Ogres here as well. They, uh, they're they carrying their momentum. They played really well the past few weeks. I think the, this work team tied some halflings, so we've seen them kind of have some difficulties with some kind of uh, one of the few teams that have a strength advantage on them. Um, so mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm going to go with the Ogres here. Yeah. Then we got the Mordheim Cryptors versus the Adventuring Elites. And I believe they're both uh, undead. Yeah, these are the, right. the, 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 I've played both these teams uh, the last two weeks, actually. I think you want to stay on that. It's interesting. I think I'm going to go with uh, the Mordheim Cryptors. I think they utilize their mummies a bit better, if I'm remembering correctly, than the Adventuring mm -hmm. Elites. Um, I think that's really going to be the the advantage there. I think he also has a strength four niggle white. Um, I tried to kill him, but uh, I really couldn't get enough knockdowns on him. But uh, strength four and advantage right there is is something he can take advantage of as well. So 
yeah, then we go with the, the Crypt Horrors. Sounds good. I'm calling it a tie. I don't, I don't even want to guess. They are very evenly matched. <laughs> I feel matched. just scrumming. And it's going to be a 1-1 one, one or a zero, 0-0 zero is what I'm feeling. Next, we got Shiner Shooting Stars versus Chorf, 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 which is Halfling versus Chorves. And you know what? I got to go with Nosedive here since he's not here to guess himself. <laughs> He's going to win it with the Shiner Shooting Stars. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with them also. We've seen within within REL um, that uh, the Halflings are able to put some damage on, on some Chorf teams. So, yeah, I think I'm with you. I'm going with the Halflings here as well. Now, you also have to go with the Halflings for the next one with that reasoning. <laughs> nah, with the Boss Hog nah, Outlaws. Nah, nah. <laughs> Not my Chorf <laughs> team. Not my Chorf team. <laughs> I I do think I'm in danger here. Uh, I think uh, Great Dragoon has played really well, um, but um, I mean I I can't pick against myself here. No, you can't. But you know who can? <laughs> I will. Cupcake Crushers, you need to crush some Chorbs because you know what we've seen so far is like in REL, some Chorbs just get messed up by halflings. <laughs> Iron Master, you bastard. <laughs> And then the last one here is the Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs versus the First and Forsaken Lions. And I'm calling this a health one. Like, this is Hiles, interesting. They're yeah. going to be scoring. And RK Blade has been doing great so far. He has been doing great. He uh, He's coming in a little beat up against this Lizards team. And um, I think we finally, I think this will be a good measuring stick for the Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs um, as far as um, how good is their team and coach against uh, RK Blaze, who's kind of uh, one of the top contenders, um, but he's going to be coming in a little bit battered. Um, I, mm. I think I'm going to go with the Lizards here. I think uh, they come up with the upset as well. Ooh, I like it. And then that's going to be that for that division. So, good job, Division Tendies. And looking forward to your next matches, and I hope you're going to enjoy this recap for them. Hello, hello, Tinnies. Welcome to your recap today. And we still have Volpes here. Go on and say hi. Yeah, how's it going, everyone? Um, I don't know anything about this division, so um, I'll probably let Iron Master speak the most and uh, throw my two cents here every now and then. I will say um, the two divisions that you're covering, Iron Master, Tindy and Tenny, um, have six Stunny teams. Um, I believe there are... Um, four halflings and two ogres which are tied for the most stunties within any division in rebel at all um in fact i i was looking at g-man earlier and i don't think they have any they had i don't yeah i don't think they have any halfling teams i think they have maybe like five ogre teams four ogre teams but um uh, a lot of halfling love in these uh these two divisions yeah i mean halflings are my favorite stunty of choice but I guess I can see where you're coming with with Ogres. And it's like, look at all that Shrink 5, man. But just all the bonehead is what turns me off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> ogres are rough. Anyway, so let's look at these stunty dibs with Northshire Nobodies losing to Starry Fight. Apparently the Halflings do not win against Dwarves. Just Chaos Dwarves. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure this is just Rumblebee, you know, taking advantage of them. Poor guys, you know. Yeah, um, RJ Carrot's a pretty a pretty decent coach. He, he plays halflings a lot. Um, he's actually um, uh, he's a PS4 coach, and um, he plays in the um, the MML, which um, I, I've actually been looking into joining myself. And um, he plays halflings over there also, so he's definitely a veteran halfling coach. So not not surprised he was able to keep it close. Yep, but you know, just. Just as Rumble me, man. We can't say good stuff about him. <laughs> <laughs> but we do see a level up on the Blitzer. He gets some guard there and a cool little halfling level up for some sure feet. That's about that, though. Some expulsions. They're fouling each other, I guess. <laughs> Fun times. Then we got another Bloody Bell uh, losing 1 2 to the true Necromance of the other Gazgul with 21 armor breaks. Just lots of pain, lots of suffering, lots of damage. Two and kills. It just seems like, just yeah, two kills, three Kaz, six KOs. That's eleven removals. So that's probably a bit higher than should have been for their uh, armor. Yeah, fifty-fifty on armor breaks. 
So you punch him one time, maybe not. You punch him this time, sure, dead. <laughs> but uh, Fez did actually hurt somebody. Oh, so nice. I'm pretty sure Fez is a ball and chain. Yeah, there was some ball and chain action hurting people, <laughs> but just lots of pain. And then moving on, we got uh, Sentence Death and the Innsmouth Lookers with a O2. The Innsmouth Lookers just being lizardmen, being strong, and the rats just couldn't seem to weasel their way in. But they did get a plus movement. I only got to earn it, so. Be really nice. And basically just injuries went the lizard way. Next, we got Empire Chads versus. Ah, oh, this is so hard to always say. <laughs> Uzkalak Usurpers, there we go. Dead Torf MVP. Ooh. Dead Umbler MVP. Jeez. <laughs> man, that's a feels bad, man. <laughs> How would you feel if you had that happen? Just, oh yeah, he got an injury, and then, oh, he leveled up. Oh, uh, he's dead. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty shit. 2-0 um, win is nice, though, so he probably can't be mm -hmm. too upset. But, uh, yeah, it's rough. You're just like, come on. I'm chores. There's so many good people to level up. Why did it have to be the dead guy? <laughs> then we got uh, the All My Elves side versus the Full Monty with a 1 1 draw. So Orcs versus Norse. It's pretty much one of those things where both teams really are scared of the other. Because, <laughs> like, Norse have a little bit of claw generally. I don't think Full Monty does, though. I don't think they have a Yeti. But they usually have Dirty Player 2. And then, like, orcs are like, oh, I could punch these guys, but they could also hit me back and then foul me off, and it could get bad. That's a fun match, usually, to watch. And as we can see, this is a 61 block versus 69 block game oh my here. Gosh. And we only got 14 breaks for orcs and 9 breaks for Norse. So it seems like we're making too many pushes happen. Yeah, maybe so. Wow. We got a cool blood sure hands runner now. So that's cool for the Norse. And Menage of Trees, Larkstar, pulling up another win here against Unknown Strain and just really showing how to fling. You know, really doing good. Early we got a guard beast too. Yeah, might be the uh, the war, one of the worst matchups. Um, well, I guess one of the best matchups for halfling team and uh facing halflings is going to be tough cuz I doubt he had tackle um and uh even that I doubt he had that much block either so if you uh, you're not rolling mm. pals uh very very easily could lose that game yep and our breaks pretty much went pretty even but the halflings did get more removals cuz they're hitting with my blow all the time so and just some general stuff good job larkstar and then we got the purebred patrician, ah, jeez, purebred patricians versus Castle Anthrax. You know, Zahn's winning a game. Who cares? This is their first season. Yeah. No. Easy. Your Zeus should try a harder team, you know? Just... Zahn's. Hiles almost pulled it off. I was rooting for him. Didn't happen, though. Yeah, looks like uh, nothing to talk no. about here. Nothing to talk about. Next up, though, on the week five, we got two Necromants getting it 2 1 over the North Shire Nobodies and getting some breaks against them. They were just apparently tearing into Halflings, getting nine removals to the two removals the Halflings got. Oof. So just feels like their offensive didn't actually do the damage they needed. And when that doesn't happen, it's like, ooh, what now? Right. Like Halflings, you, uh, you almost need to outblock your opponent. And when that doesn't happen, yeah, bad things. Bad things happen. Yeah. And then after that, we got In's Mouth Lookers versus Starry Fight. So Rumblebee beating up some some lizards. I can respect this one. This is the one time I'll give him some respect here. He beat <laughs> up some lizards in a 50 versus 55 block game where the lizards did no damage. Wow. That, uh, that is ridiculous. AV9's holding up, huh? And it seems like the dwarves are finally getting their guard in there and working out. But it's also Thick Skull, yeah, I remember. It's probably what's saving him from those KOs. Yeah, maybe so. And um, the But not a single injury out of 105 blocks, though. Yeah. 
That's rough. And uh, the lizards rolled a lot of pals, so it wasn't it wasn't really the uh, the issue of knocking them down. It was uh, yeah. the issue of breaking armor. Crazy stuff. Ninety three percent. He only broke armor twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Either way, though, good win to uh, Rumblebee there. We'll move on to the Uzlak Usurpers and another Bloody Bell. In which that gutter runner leveled up a lot. <laughs> My god. So he became Blood Step in one game. <laughs> John Revolta making it happen. Mm-hmm. Then that Hobgoblin, no damage. He's just badly hurt after that. Age 15 armor breaks to 9. Just seems like Rats just got the ball and then got the ball again and then went from there. But the Uzlak Usurpers were definitely getting the pain in there with four KOs and two injuries. No. So good job, another bloody bell. And then Full Monty pulling up another tie against Sentence to Death, in which looks admin. Never mind. This is an admin draw, I believe. Yeah. So we're not even going to talk about that. I'm very sad now. No <laughs> Norse game. <laughs> Unknown Train versus Empire of the Chads. 2-1 to the uh, Empire. So, Nurgle beating up my Unknown Strain buddies. And they at least did get a level out of their troubles. And that's a very nice ogre with a pile on and break tackle. Bruno Thunder loins. <laughs> those, I love it. <laughs> those, those loins are uh, bringing the thunder for sure. Dropping, dropping on some rotters' heads, I guess. Yeah. Why? They just go splat, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway so good job and fire the chads this was the week of the uh ogre right here seeing that i believe this was when gypsy prince also yeah, won i think you're right and they did some good and then cancel anthrax going 1-0 against all my elves died you know just zons just early zons so let's move on um we got pure red patricians versus imagine Jeez, now I can't say it. Menagerie Trees. And this is their first tie right here. So, not winning a game somehow. <laughs> yeah. It seems like the high elves just kind of went, you know, I'm just not going to base your trees. You know, and then I'm going to get all the removals against you while you get nothing. Yeah, you know, uh, wow. No, no so, removals against elves. That's... I, and I normally don't say this, but I think the halflings got diced a bit. I, when you I, don't get removals as halflings. I think you're right. Um, definitely some of the the block dice skewed to uh, skewed towards skulls. Um, did well in the take root, uh, go in the go th- for it. Um, dodging only sixty percent. That's uh, that's not what you want to see. Yeah. It's a bit lame, but good tree uh, MVP lineman with kick MVP. Both sides really can't be too too sad. Just. The halflings are, are sorry. I wouldn't say the uh, high elves are really happy that they just got so much SVP, and then even got to draw large star there. Yeah, good coach. Yeah, no doubt. And then we're gonna take a look at week six now. Empire of the Chads versus no, Northshire Nobodies, in which the halflings assert dominance against the ogres. Wow, that's uh, I, I mean, I it. Just knowing nothing about this division and looking at the last two weeks, I would have uh, expected the Ogres to do a little bit better here. But uh, like I said, RJ Carrot's uh, he's a good coach. So yeah, we're like Thunderloins. Come on, where you at? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Apparently, he got the case. rules were pretty similar, but I think we're hitting stunties again, and it really doesn't matter. Yep. But all the halfling SPP right here. I don't think I've ever seen it like this, where it's not all on trees. And a little bit on halflings yeah, where they it looks score. Like two halflings were able to get some casualties there. That's awesome. Beating up some nobblers. Tor considerate lover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting these nice names now. <laughs> yeah. I think we're gonna check out the Chads after this. Yeah, agreed. And then uh where are we at on this? Uh number two now. Number two, there we go. Sentence to death versus all my elves died. Um Another concede win. win so so yeah i i think what we found out is that um since the death and um the team is now no longer within the league itself so we saw a couple of admin decisions the last couple of weeks which yeah. is unfortunate i guess it was uh sentenced to death yep. I, I had to do it it was right there 
<laughs> Good one. Nice. So, well, uh, we'll move on. Um, sad to see him go and not be in here for though. It's always fun having everyone in there, even if you're having a bad season. Yep. We got another bloody bell versus Menage Trees, and what is weird to call, but maybe an upset. <laughs> even just a one zero. Some rats able to steal the ball from the halflings, and or maybe just stop the halflings in general, while uh, you know they get their one score. Yeah, but that, this was a lot of damage. Like, there's two kills. We have lots of KOs, some injuries, and then not much for the rats. So, yeah, they uh, the rats were able to to pay the price, but um, the the gutters. If I were to guess, the uh, the gutters. Uh, speed and movement advantage might have been too much for the uh, for the halflings. Mm-hmm. It seems we did mess up a catch twice out of three attempts with one working. So I'm guessing that kind of could have been clutch right there. Yeah. You just drop a ball. Yeah, once the ball's right on there. the ground against a Skaven team, um, could definitely lose that one. Another 60% on dodging. Um, Larkstar, uh, his halflings, got to pick up their feet. Yeah, they just they got to learn to roll. <laughs> Gotta learn to roll. Anyway, good job, another bloody bell. And let's go down to Starry Fight versus the Purebed Petitions. And we're seeing these high elves after having a pretty good performance early on, just getting beat up now. And Rome will be finally coming back with the dwarves after a couple early losses. Yeah. And just lots of blocks. Nothing for the high elves coming through, though. And a couple injuries and a KO. Some armor breaks. I guess this is kind of what you would expect out of it. Yeah, it seems like maybe a typical 2-1 grind. Um, 81% ball possession for the dwarves, 18% mm -hmm. for the elves. Um, probably didn't get as many removals as he wanted, but um, I think this is kind of your typical 2-1 grind. Uh, well done by Rumblebee, uh, veteran coach. Yep. And and the high elves do still get to walk away with an MVP on an, a plus agility... I can't even say it. Plus agility lineman. Yeah, <laughs> Senor Gonzalez. So... Now, I'm going to give you a question. Do you level up into Wrestle, Leap, or Dodge? I, I personally would do Dodge. Um, I think the Agility 5 by itself isn't very good, so I'd want it to actually sync up with this skill that you can actually take advantage of it, so I personally would go Dodge. Mm -hmm. I usually think Wrestle's the good way to go, because you get your Cage Dive ready then. And I I just use it for that, and then it's like you get dodge afterwards, and then you rodge it, and then leap. But it's a very very slow process. Right, it's definitely a project player. Any high elf is probably yeah. going to be a project player, um, except for maybe the blitzers. But um, yeah, so uh, get, taking up the agility, you uh, I I think you take it. I think it's a good decision to take the skill, mm -hmm. but it's uh. It's, he, he have, you're going to have to protect him for a long time, and uh, he's in it for the long haul. So he could be a fantastic player. It's going to take a while for him to get there. And then seeing these next two, we're going to give a quick thing of uh, the Zons should lose, you know. True Necromancer should win. And then, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's about it. Innsmouth Lookers versus uh, Unknown Strain. Nurgle versus Lizards. I think we're going to expect the Lizards to win that one. Just on a quick guess there. Yeah. And then looking at our last played game here, we see Full Monty and the Uzlak Usurpers fight it out and get a 1-1 draw. Getting some cool MVP levels with a Wrestle Hobgoblin and a Block Ulforner with an MNG. Nice. Which, these armor breaks, they seem a bit off. But the Blocks seem also a bit off. With 69 for the Chorbs wow. and 42 for Full Monty. Wow. And that is 11 removals My gosh. versus one. I'm surprised he uh, came out with a draw there. Yeah. I think it was just Norris had probably offense and they made it to the touchdown line, maybe losing a couple people. And then that's where everything went wrong afterwards. Yep. Just get creamed a bit after their touchdown. Yep. Then they set up again, get creamed again. And then just, there is hardly a Norseman left. But he still got the draw, so it's something. <laughs> I, I, I have a question for you. For the Ulf owners, um, how, how would you typically uh, level them up? My initial reaction, I, I don't have experience playing with Norse mm -hmm. really at all. Um, I would think that you would want them to be 
kind of your um, block guard or guard block stand firm. Um, but ha- yeah. how what would you be rec- what, how would you recommend uh, developing an old corner? With how I play, I always take block guard generally. Um, you can take block mighty blow, try to skill them up faster, or you go mighty blow first, even if you're a crazy man, because you're like, I have block already. But uh, generally, yeah, I like block. I've seen a couple cool ideas where you're like, how about I just make this a wrestle guy instead? Because they don't start with block. So you actually do have an option to kind of make a cool sacker with break tackle and stuff. That's interesting. There's... But it's your strength axis guy too, so I usually right. see him as a guard guy or killer. That's what I think. I, I, I would think he's more kind of a pillar um, within your team too, setting up mm-hmm. the uh, um, just kind of a, a someone you can place within or kind of yep. keep centralized in the middle of the field and use the guard for the berserkers frenzy. Um, really, the main thing I move around with old foreigners is like I actually like break tackle over sand firm a bit more on him now, just because I've seen yeah. They just need that extra movement, like your bull centaur. Right. And, and they, also... They, they might be your only mobile guard if you do that. So, yeah. And also, Frenzy really helps with guard, which you wouldn't expect, because they're just moving around with it. It's not just like you kind of nudge your way into a spot. You get yourself deep, and then your guard's working twice as good as a uh, normal block guy. That's interesting, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's... Uh, with them, it's Frenzy on the team. It's... Um, I think it's... it's I, w- I personally would would play a lot slower with Norse uh, just because of all the possibilities and where your players are going to be moving and whether it's worth it mm-hmm. as great through this block or not. But uh, I think, I think they're an interesting team. Yeah. So good question. And let's move on to the leaderboard real quick and see where we're at. Unsurprisingly, Zons are at the top, you know, Gruzu, <laughs> a veteran coach used to play lizards and was fun with it. Now does not like fun and chose Amazons. Uh, he, he likes uh, he likes the teams that beat beat up on the the thousand TV uh, teams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So let's just see if he's going to stick out with Zons for you know a few seasons because this is an eternal league. You shouldn't be playing for just one season. Come on. <laughs> so Castle Anthrax, come up to like Div One and try try living there. <laughs> anyway, past has, that. Has there ever been a Division One Amazon team? Not yet, and the closest one to it, I believe, is in Division Four, and they've been to playoffs, so they're actually a pretty decent team. Is that Gamba's they kept up team? with the Gamba Gamba? Who... Mm. Oh, I guess Gamba is up there too, but no, Gamba's gals actually haven't been up to uh, that division yet. Okay, I... I reviewed them before, but I'll have to remember what their actual name is. Right, somewhere later in this, but Larkstar still second place with halflings. Very impressive feat with a four one one. He's probably leading the Stunty Cup. I haven't checked standings, but uh, I think there's a Goblin team in G Man that has three wins. But uh, I think he's on top. Yeah. Usually, from what I heard, like Ravenpool lot won it last time, and he only had like three or four wins, and then a bunch of draws. So Larkstar is like pretty much almost locked it, and he could even steal the top spot if Grizu drops the ball. That that would be fun to see. Which then we have an admin choice of who the hell goes into playoffs for Stunty Cup. <laughs> yeah. That's or do you just two Stunty keep it teams as... in the playoffs? That'd be yeah. fun to watch. I'll, I want to see a, a Stunty win in the playoffs at some point. That would be so cool. But uh, after that, we got two Necromance with a 401, very respectable record. Still got to play their match. And Starry Fight coming back after rough first two weeks, got their guard. Got their dwarf on, going on. Yeah, dwarves aren't. I mean, they're they're good at low TV, but they're not that good at low TV, right? Like they need to. Yeah. They need to get their twelve hundred is where they pick up. Yep. Yep. And then uh, all my elves died with Chupi. three one two respectable record, and just you know, kind of keep them near the middle of the pack, closer to the top. Uh, playoff run is probably getting a bit hard from this point on. We get uh, Unknown Strain with a 302. He has a chance of getting up to the top five and could really pull a uh, playoff run, but he's got to win it. Full Monty with probably one of the weirdest records ever for Norse with a 150. <laughs> Usually, Norse are make it or break it. Yeah. I'm so, a bit seeing him draw a bunch is a bit weird. Yeah. And also, it's like, 
five out of six games of the draw. Granted, one was an admin draw, but still, out of five games, four of them being draws and one win. Yeah, usually those are different. And one thing I'm sad to see here is the purebred magicians kind of going down a bit with a 2 1 3 record after having a very good lead at the start. So, a little bit of shame. Brader coming up with his new Chaos Dwarves. And he was early, he was Dwarves in another season. So he is returning coach. And 2-on-3, I think he's just trying to get in the Chaos Dwarf way. Kind of like, let's get that development I need and then work on it. Yeah, yeah. Another Bloody Bell. They were the ones that did get the win against uh, the Halflings. So good on them. A little bit near the bottom still with 2-on-3. But they're going to be getting better and better as they go. And the ends mouth lookers with Conquistador with a 1 2 2. Seems to be averaging out. And then Empire of the Chads taking the traditional stunty route of a 105. And then we got Snake Kitties, Teddy Rose with 114. Which I believe Snake Kitties are a bit newer. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think they inherited the. Uh, well, no, they uh, they they must have taken over for the uh, the other halfling team. Yeah, because that's uh, that's the other halfling teams. So they, it looks like this division might have had two dropouts with uh, maybe someone from the ramp up replacing one. Yeah. One thing I want to say is lots of respect to the ramp up crew and how it's working out. I really enjoy that they're filling in these divisions and taking over records. Oh man, I needed that so bad for last season. I think I was nine E, and I think we ended up having like twenty one total coaches by the end of it that uh, played at some point during the season. So <laughs> it's uh yeah, yeah that's a bit awesome. silly. I think uh, the ramp up's awesome, and and I think it's also great because you see so many people throughout the season asking mm-hmm. for a chance to play. How do I play? And it's always been well, you just got to wait for signups. Um, mm-hmm. and so just immediately getting people in and immediately engaging individuals who are interested yeah. in the league. Is really gonna, I think, make the league boom even more. Yeah, it's just finally opening up that. Hey, I'm casual and I need to just try it now because I got it now on the sale. Instead of just being like, oh yeah, you're gonna have to look elsewhere for a bit, man. Sorry. Yeah. But I, I hope it doesn't end up hurting the rookie league because uh, you might see a lot of people instead of going to the rookie league try to just go immediate to a ramp up. So I hope long term mm-hmm. it doesn't hurt the rookie league, but uh, I do think it's. A I good think thing. that's where they usually go to upstarts if they're rookie. Okay. Hmm. So, they got options. Yeah. Which is probably one of the best part about this league. Yeah, no doubt. But let's look at some teams, man. And who better to start with than the Empire Chads? Of course. As they load in. Look upon our dongs, ye mighty in despair. See, look at that. He has some good flavor text. <laughs> and we see... Uh, some Nobblers at the top. One with Sneaky Git showing off. Then we got Bruno Thunderloins, proving he's the best ogre with pile on and break tackle already. Got a guard guy, and then got a stand firm guy. I, I kind of want to look up all of his references here, because I don't think I get them all. <laughs> but I'm also scared to look at his references. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going with it at face value, because it's great. <laughs> But uh, freaking stand firm, I've heard, is really, really good on ogres. Because like, if you can't move them away, they're getting blocks back on you. And you just get shredded. Yeah, I actually like that a lot. Mm-hmm. But no doubles yet, so no block. And only two uh, re-rolls so far. I think he did the five ogre start. And then uh, he's the apothecary. Probably going to be buying re-rolls from now on. And maybe some knoblars. But he's looking pretty good. Yeah, it's it's a good looking team so far. You'd expect maybe a little bit more damage on him, but no, looks good. Mm-hmm. And Bruno just look at it, twenty five SVP already. This is it's pretty this good. Is, this is a man amongst boys, isn't it? One MVP, ten casualties in seven matches. Uh, has also knocked out six people. Has killed two people, um, and uh, has uh, surfed somebody as well. This is a that's a bad boy. That is a man's man right there. <laughs> Okay, so that was a good look at him. Not doing great record-wise, but that's Ogres. So it's fair enough. Who do we want to look at next? 
actually, you know what? Let's look at Snake Kitties, which is on the uh, second page. All right, yeah, the new and, team, huh? Yeah. And, and they're Woo Lizard Suey. We believe these guys came for the ramp up, so don't quote us on that. But uh, they do have uh, coming into the division with four wins, one draw, one loss. Yep, they did come up from ramp up, so awesome. They did fill in, and they do have some good development already. Guard Crocs, a uh, Block Saurus, and a Block Mighty Blow Saurus, and all the rest of the Saurus are generally really close to leveling up. Three within MVP range. And then one that's just fresh. Skink's looking good with a blodge one, a sidestep one, a diving tackle one. Though personally, I don't like diving tackle first on skinks. I always take sidestep then diving tackle. Yeah, I agree. But it's just difference opinion. And from what I've seen, this coach actually has a 4-1-1 record with him from ramp up. So they're going to be crushing it in here. I, I feel. I, I'm excited to see how they go. Um, I... I, uh, I, I, coming up to the kind of the big leagues, I wonder if uh, we see them continue winning or if uh, the change in competition happens from uh, the ramp up to uh, being in the division. You know, I think it depends on if they have to face Larkstar or not. I want to see that match. <laughs> <laughs> so, hopefully, do. But that is that. Let's go look at the last week of the schedule. Because I accidentally clicked out of the division. <laughs> anyway, so we got Snake Kitties versus the Purebred Patricians. So All right, that's our new matchup. team we just saw. Yeah. Versus the High Elves. And I'm going to go with Snake Kitties. By record alone. The High Elves are not a bad shout either. What you thinking on there? Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to go with the Lizards here. I think... Um... Uh, I, I think they've come in with a good record. Uh, I think they uh, kind of come into first division. I think uh, I think it's a high elf team, right? The purebred positions. So I think uh, yeah. they're probably still kind of middle of getting their team ramped up to compete with uh, some of the tougher teams. So I think uh, the Lizards have the stronger team, and the coach has proven to win previously. So I'm going to go with the Lizards. Now, next up, it's going to be a crappy matchup with some Zons versus some Flings. And I'm just hoping. I'm hoping against hope that Menagetries pull out a W. <laughs> Punk or Zoot. So this is what uh, the table leader versus number two uh, on the leaderboard. Yep. So this is a yeah high-powered matchup. And so it's definitely a must-watch if you're in this division. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm going to go with the halflings here as well. I think, uh, I think we're, we're going to yeah. see some trees roll some pals, get some removals. Yeah, I'm calling it like three LOS removals immediately. <laughs> and then it just goes from there. And watch, it'll probably be like three trees out, and I'm like, not what I meant. <laughs> anyway, we got Unknown Strain versus All My Elves Died. And it's Neural versus Orcs. So Orcs, I believe, are traditionally uh, looking forward to this matchup. So I'm going to go with All My Elves Died. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you on that one as well. Yeah, um, I think we're on the same page here. Um, that uh, just kind of from what I've seen from the the past uh, few weeks um, results, I think I'm going to go with all my elves with died as well. And then we got Full Monty versus Empire of the Chads. Going with the Naked Boys or the Thunderloin Boys? Yeah, I was going to say, you're probably a bit conflicted here, huh? To, to some of yeah. your favorite teams in the division. You know, who do I pick? I'll let you pick first. Uh, I'm going to go with the Norse. Um, <laughs> I think uh, Thunderloins is going to maybe uh, get some Kazes. I think he's, what, six SPP away from the, the next level. I think he gets there. Yep. Uh, but I think the Norse came out on top. Okay, I'll go with the Chads then, because I, I just want to see him do stuff. <laughs> That's all I want. I don't care if it's a tie. I just want to see that match. That's kind of like a Norse on Norse, except... You know, it's with Chads <laughs> and lots more Mighty Blow. Yeah. They, uh, they equally have uh, the same amount of clothing. So and, uh, it'll be interesting. And then we got an admin win here for uh, Braider against the Craven Skaven. I'm pretty sure that's just an AI team in there. It, is it? The Craven is Skaven? It? If I remember right, maybe not. 
Um, no, probably not, actually. I don't know. <laughs> Unless they left. Which, if they left, they left a pretty decent team back. So, yeah, this might actually be the other team that is uh, joined from Rampart. Well, no, this is... I guess they did drop, yeah. Because they had a 3-3 last time with uh, St. Kitties. Uh, yeah, so they're mm. they're from Ramp Up also. So I think they're the ones that uh, replaced uh, the Sins to Ah, okay. So I think they're... Team. So, yeah, I just is... wonder why that's an admin call then. Um, I, I, well, I think that's a new team from Ramp Up. Yeah, I guess that is. So it'll probably be refixed. But Craven Skaven, we don't know much about him besides having a Blodge Step Gutter Runner, Raj Gutter Runner, second Raj Gutter Runner, extra Arms Thrower, so that's a double right there. Uh, guard Vermin, Mighty Blow Vermin, Agility Line Rat with minus movement. And with a record of 4 1 1. Pretty dang good. And he has a bench to 13. So that could change out your uh, your thoughts there. But you know what? I'm going to go with the Chorfs. Um, I think they got yeah. it. Yeah, I think we'll go with the Chorfs too. Uh, the tackle's going to come in handy. I think they get the removals. Yeah, um, I, I just want to see them blow up. Because <laughs> I like Skaven blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we got the Innsmouth Lookers. Or just Look. And another Bloody Bell. And I'm going to call that one Skaven. Because Skaven just like stunting on Lizardmen normally. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. I think I'm going to go with the Lizards here. Um, I think they are able to lock down a lot of the Vermin and uh, Linemen. Um, I think the Skinks can keep up speed-wise with um, the Gutter Runners. And uh, I think I think the Lizards get enough removals that they, uh, they come out on top. Yep. And then last one, we got Starry Fight versus True Necromance. I'm calling Necro. <laughs> just to uh just to spite Rumblebee, or you think uh actually No, I think just the Necro's got it. They got Claw and they got a decent team. They've been doing pretty good recently. Yeah. I think they got it. Yeah, I uh I think I'm gonna go with Rumblebee here. Uh, I'm gonna go with the the coach Oh wait, wait, can I switch that? <laughs> uh, there is only one flesh golem in for the match and one werewolf. Oh, so I'm gonna switch that real quick. Yeah. I didn't know that Good until call. looking in. Good call. I think uh, I was gonna lean on uh, Rumblebee being a, a veteran coach who's playing really well of late. It seems like this team's starting to come into its own. Um, I think I've seen within the Discord that uh, he has, I think maybe the most surfs within Rebel or Ariel. So um, I mm. think uh, I- I'm gonna go with the, the dwarfs here. Yeah. And one thing to note is they do have a plus strength runner now and four guard and a wrestle runner. Nice. So pretty good there. And that's going to be it for these guys, isn't it? So good job, division leaders, besides, uh, you know, Amazons. Amazons. I, I just hate Amazons. Okay, guys? I hate Amazons. <laughs> <laughs> Get it out, man. Get it out. It's healthy. Ah. That they did me wrong one too many times. <laughs> but besides that, thanks for uh, coming in. No, I, I help appreciate. Me out, Vulpes. No, of course, I appreciate you having me on. This was a lot of fun. Um, I uh, I'm glad I got to learn uh, a lot more about uh, Division Ten E. I'm excited to see the ramp up coaches. I'm excited to see Lark Star if you can continue to um, be on top of the, the Stunty Cup uh, leaderboard. So it's it's a fun division to watch. Yeah. So, thanks for listening, guys, and have a good one.